Hey guys, how's it going? This is Pablo. Um, I'm here to do Mac 3001 or Mac 301, which is thermodynamics. This is week four, problem number one. And problem one, one number one, we have a 0.5 meter cube rigid tank that has R134A initially at 160 kilopascals and 40% quality. Heat is now transferred to the tank until the pressure rises to 700 kilopascals. Okay, so let's get started. So first things first, make sure that we always write what we're dealing with so we don't look at the wrong tables, right? And we have two states as per usual. We have state one, and we're gonna have state two. What, we do, what do we know about these states? Well, on the first state, I know the volume. has been given and then also the pressure so p1 so let's call it one p1 and then p1 is 160 kilopascals and then I know the pressure on p2 because it says it's going to be heated all the way to 700 kilopascals cool what else do we know we have that special word that pops up rigid whenever that word pops up we know that there's no delta v right there's no change in volume because the container is too rigid for it to change in volume, so we know there's no change in volume, therefore we know V2 is equal to V1. There's no mass going in or out of the tank, so we know that there's no change in mass, the mass that's inside does not change, it remains the same. And therefore, because the, these two things, because of these two things combined, the specific volume on the first state has to be equal to the specific volume on the second state, right? Because specific volume, once again, it's the volume divided by the mass, right? Cool. Um, it asks us to determine the mass of refrigerant, the amount of heat transferred, and to show this on a PV diagram. So let's start with the PV diagram because it's usually the best way for us to actually grasp what's happening here. Okay, so PV, watch out, it's not TV, it's PV, pressure in specific volume. And what we have, we're going to draw, let's draw our saturation line here, whatever that is. And what do we know? We know on the first state we have the pressure, and that's 160. And I'm not sure where I am on the first state yet. Oh, no, I do, because I have the quality, right? First state, we're given the quality as well, yeah, on the first state. So the quality is x equals... 40%, okay? So if we have a quality, what is a quality? If you guys re remember, the quality is the mass of vapor or gas, in this case gas actually, divided by the total mass, right? And then if it's telling us that there's a quality, we know that the first state is a mixture, right? It's a saturated mixture. And therefore, we know we have to be inside the dome, yeah? So on the first state, we're going to be somewhere inside the dome. And 40%, that means we are actually... Oh, maybe here, yeah, 50% right in the middle, and about maybe there. And then we're going to rise, without changing the volume, we're going to rise the, temp the pressure, yeah? So without changing my volume, so I have to stay exactly at the same point, I'm going to rise my pressure. Now, I don't know whether I'm going to end up uh, finishing this um, situation inside the dome, right on the line, or beyond right, and above. So to do that, we actually have to figure it out using our tables. But let's start with the mass, which is what's being asked on part A. So let me change colors here. Part A is asking for the total mass. Okay, so let's look at what, what we know. We know that uh, the quality is 0 0.4. And we know that that's equal to the mass of gas, or the mass of vapor, divided by the M total. We are after this M total, that's what we're looking for, right? Okay, what else do we know? We know that the specific volume, just like it's said over here on the top, specific volume is the volume over the mass, all right? In this case also, that's total, right? Specific volume relates to everything that's inside the container. So note that by relating these guys here, we can actually try to find the mass because we can actually relate this guy in two ways. One of the ways is the specific volume is this. The other way is because we know 
this is a mixture, a saturated mixture, we know that this specific volume here is going to be a combination of these two volumes, right? The saturated vapor volume and the saturated liquid volume, right? Check out my other video. I'll probably leave a description or a description or here, do a link for you guys, right? So this is going to be X, which is the quality, the amount of vapor that we have, times the saturated vapor plus 1 minus X, that is whatever is left, times the saturated liquid. Yeah? Now, we can grab this value off the table. We can grab this value off the table. We have X. We have X. We have the volume. The only thing we don't have in this equation is the total mass, which is exactly what we're looking for. Right? So if I go all the way to my table, and that's going to be paid table A12 on page 918 of our property tables. If you go down there, we can grab the information at, what is it, pressure table, right? At pressure of 160 kilopascals. And at that pressure, I'm going to grab this value and this value, all right? Over here, it's going to be 0.5, which we know already, so let's write this out. So 0 0.5 meters cubed divided by the total mass equals x. What is x? 0 0.4. Okay. What is the uh, specific volume for the vaporization in this case? 0 0.12355. 355. All right. Plus 1 minus 0.4. So that's 60%, right? The remainder. And on this case here, it's going to be 0 0.0007435. 74. Three five. Ran out of space there. Actually, oh, I'm out of space in the sheet too. Uh, so let's write it. So I just write, just write over here. So multiplied by zero 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 seven four three five. So hopefully you can see it now. Good. All right. So let's rearrange this. So we want this guy here. So this is going to be zero point five meters cubed divided by mass total. I'm going to do this math here. This is going to end up being 0 0.04986. All right. And what's the unit here? There's no unit for x, and this guy is meters cubed per kilogram. So this is meters cubed per kilogram. Yep. And then send the mass over here, divide by this guy. We're going to get these guys canceled out. I'm going to have mass on the top. Right? So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just push this upwards a bit. There you go. And then mass total. In this case here, we're going to grab it's uh, 10.03 kilograms. Brilliant. So we solved the first part of the problem, which is asking us to determine what is the total mass of this uh, system, right? So inside the system, we have 10.03 kilograms of which about four kilograms are vapor or gas, and the other six kilograms are liquid, right, of this refrigerant here. Cool. So, now that we have that, let's move on. Oops. Cool. Next thing you want to see is the amount of heat that's been transferred to, the, to our system, to our solution. Now, first things first. You guys, right now, you learned the first law of thermodynamics that states that the change in internal energy of a given system is related to the heat and the work being done in or by that system, right? So as long as we don't have any changes in mass, we can always apply this guy here, this equation here, and therefore we can use that in this case to determine the amount of heat that's being transferred into our system. Now, very important, whenever we don't have a change in volume, whenever delta V is zero, that implies that there's no work, right? To have a work, we have to have a change in volume. So if this is the case, we have no work, then therefore the change in internal energy of a system is equal to the heat being given or taken away by the system. Now, before we move on, pay attention to this equation. What is this telling us? It's telling us that if our internal energy of our system goes down, well, we're losing energy, right? It's going from this state of energy to this state of energy, so therefore we're losing energy. If we go upwards, it means we're gaining energy. So this 
relationship, this equation here is going to show us exactly that. Because if by the end of our calculations, our um, final state is smaller than our initial state, then it's going to be a negative delta U. Therefore, we're losing heat. If it's positive, we're gaining heat, right? So there you go. So what we need to do is find this out so we can find this out. How do we find that out? Well, we have two states. We find the internal energy for state one, and we find internal energy for state two. Okay? For state one is straightforward because we already have the defined state. We know that the state one is uh, a mixture. We go to the same table we were looking at before, the 12 on pressure equals 160 kilopascals. And then, without much thinking, we can actually get the value for U1. How are we going to do that? Well, just like we did before, right? Change colors. U1 from the table is going to be a combination of the vapor U plus the liquid U, right? A ratio between the two of them. We have this from the table. We have this from the table. This is 40. This is 40. So this becomes 60. Yeah, so... U1 is going to be equal to um, 0 0.4. What's the vapor one in this case? It's 221.37 kilojoules per kilogram plus 0 0.6. And the liquid one is 31.06. Yep. And that renders that my U1. Uh, lowercase u1 is 107.18 kilojoules per kilogram. Cool. So that's our u1. We got this one already. All we need is find this guy here so we can find our delta u. Right? Cool. So let's go find our second state. So state 2. We don't know what state 2 is yet, but we know some things about state 2. What do we know about state 2? We know it's specific volume because we know it didn't change from state one so it has to be the same as in state one and we also know the pressure pressure is 700 kilopascals okay so if you recall what we found on the previous calculations let me push it up here again the specific volume right specific volume has to be the same so this guy has to be 0 0.04 986 meters cubed per kilogram. And what are we going to do? We're going to look at the table and see whether this is a mixture, a saturated mixture, or if it's a condensed liquid, uh, sorry, a compressed liquid, or if this is a superheated fluid. Right? So we look on the table. All right, I'm going to look on table again, A12. I'm going to look under the pressure of 700 kilopascals which is the same thing as 0 0.6 megapascals. And I'm going to see that my specific volume for vapor is 0 0.00083, and then it goes on, meters cubed per kilogram. And my specific volume from the liquid is 0 0.02, 9, Oops, sorry, I inverted this. This is liquid, sorry. Liquid always has to be smaller than vapor, right? And this is vapor. 0 0.0293, and then it goes on meters cubed per kilogram. Okay? So, liquid, vapor. Okay. Now, our value has to be between these two guys here to be a saturated liquid uh, mixture. And it's not, right? You can see that it's greater than our vapor. So how, what do we conclude? We conclude that because uh, let's put because V2 is greater than VVAP, therefore this is a superheated fluid, right? So this is a superheated fluid. If this is a superheated fluid, we're looking at the wrong table. So therefore, we need to go, instead of using this table, we need to go to table, let's change colors. We need to go to table A13, which is in page 920. And then we're going to look at the superheated table in the right place. So now we're going to look at P13. 
at 0 0.7 megapascals. But for some reason, it is 0 0.7 megapascals. And then we're going to grab our U from there, right? And note that now we don't have a combination because it's only one thing. So we can go straight off and grab U, U2 from the table. And what's the U that we find? We find that we're going to have to interpolate, right? Because we don't have one that's specifically correlated to this guy here. So we're going to have to interpolate. And we're going to interpolate between, it's going to be between 160 Celsius and 150 Celsius. You're going to see that our value of 0 0.049 is going to fall between the, the values that are in here. So we interpolate to find our U. So our U has to be between the U for 150 and the U for 160, right in the middle here. Okay? You learned how to interpolate already. I'm going to have to do that here with you guys. So by interpolating, I got 376.9 kilojoules per kilogram. All right? So what do we need to do now? Well, we have the two values that we needed, this guy and this guy. So now we can calculate our delta U easily, right? There's no tricks here, no mystery. So let me just grab a new piece of paper so it doesn't get messy. All right, let's just rewrite what we have. U2 from the interpolation of the superheated table 376.9 kilojoules per kilograms. U1 from the saturated mixture table is 1718 kilojoules per kilograms. So what we need to do now well, to find delta U, that's the easy part. Our delta U is going to be U2 minus U1. So the final state minus the initial one. It's going to be 376.9 minus 107.18, that's kilojoules per kilogram. So our delta U, and this is again, small caps, don't forget that, is going to be approximately 269.7 kilojoules per kilograms. Okay? Now note that we're not finished, and a lot of people are going to stop here. But what are we after? We're after Q. Right, we're not after delta U. And don't forget, Q is energy, right? So in order to get this in energy, we actually have to get rid of this guy. To get rid of that guy, we need to know how much mass we have. And we do know that because we did that on problem A, right? So if you remember what we did on the first part, on part A, over here, we grabbed the total mass, which is 10.03. So mass total is 10.03 kilograms. And therefore, to calculate our uppercase U, now instead of the lowercase one, the uppercase U, which is the one that we don't have the uh, kilograms anymore, it's not specific anymore, now it's for the whole system, we just multiply by the mass, right? So we're going to multiply that by mass, it's going to give us about 10 times greater, so it's going to be 27.5.3, and that's in kilojoules, all right? Last but not least, last but not least, what do we need to see? The heat added to the system is 2705.3 because, because delta U equals Q, right? So don't forget that, that step that we did before in which we show that there's no work being done by the fluid or to the fluid means that the difference in internal energy has, is only due to the energy, the, the heat being gained or lost. And this guy, our heat is positive, what does that mean? It means that the, inner, the heat is going into the system. Well, the question is telling us that, right? Heat is now transferred to the tank. So the tank is absorbing that heat, which makes our internal energy go from 107 to 370, okay? So it all makes sense when you put the whole thing together and it has to make sense in your head too, okay? This last step, it looks trivial, but don't forget that you actually have to show that. It's not something that it's going to happen every, for every single instance. It's only when there's no change in volume, therefore there's no work being done to the system or by the system. All right, see you guys soon.